Hello and welcome to a new episode of Pat's Chat. Today I have a very inspirational lady with me, Gita Lakshmandas, if I say that correctly this time. Uh, <laughs> thank you well. so much for joining me today, uh, Gita. How are you? I'm good, Pat. I'm good. Really feeling well. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Uh, a mother of three daughters, a nutritional chef with your own cooking academy, healthy cooking instructor, um, and also a specialist in post-illness diets. Today, we will talk a lot about foods. Um, but before we come to the food, um, Ankita, who, who are you? What, uh, how would you describe yourself? Well, I think who I am has changed through the years, right? I maybe I started off as a lawyer in Malaysia, but not being able to work down here, I changed my whole, um, you know, profession. I went into cooking, which was something I didn't even know how to do. I was voted most likely to succeed in corporate life. And, you know, so that that's another story of its own. But, you know, I learned how to cook. And after that, I actually learned how to teach other people how to cook. And it has been a fantastic journey. I, I mean, I really now enjoy that. It's been therapeutic. It in, and uh, today, in fact, I'm learning how to do cooking classes using Zoom, you know, and that for me is another new learning. So <laughs> what I know is that I'm a lifelong learner. Uh, yeah. No choice, but I like it, you know, because <laughs> every time I do something that's new, it makes me feel so, so enthusiastic so vibrant and and that's why i called my platform now vibrant living with gita because yeah. i think that there is a whole story behind that you know? Of course, and we will figure out more about the stories. Vibrant Living with uh, Gita, but also um, you're the founder of uh, Culinary Capers. Uh, this cooking academy uh, all comes together with a healthy life uh, in the end. Uh, but you said uh, said it just before. Uh, you're from Singapore. You start uh, you you studied law, right? Um, so you did you a practice? Lawyer by Yes. Lawyer by training, yeah. <laughs> I was most likely to succeed in corporate life. I, I, you know, I thought I would be a lawyer at court, you know, speaking up and, and doing. I used to do a lot of divorce and uh, estate litigation cases. I think today I'm doing more speaking about food and nutrition and uh, coaching and all these kinds of things. So the whole arena has changed. But I think that what hasn't changed is the fact that I like being able to speak up. <laughs> I have a lot to say and I do not like to be controlled as to what I need to say. You know? <laughs> I like that. The only thing I try to control today is the time. Uh, we have only half an hour. Uh, <laughs> everything else I know. Um, you will talk a lot. Um, I'm, I'm really excited, looking forward to that. And uh, well, as you said, you you came to Malaysia and uh, because you, you didn't want or you couldn't practice here, you, you, you had to look for something else, something different to do. And yeah, you but you know, I didn't really, I wasn't really looking for this. It's just more or less, it's almost like it fell into my lap because I couldn't cook at that time and both uh, my husband at that time was uh, you know and my mother-in-law his mother my mother everybody were good cooks so the expectations were very high on me so I did want to learn and everything but it, what I didn't realize was when I started learning how much I started to enjoy it being in the kitchen you know putting pants here and there. And also when I had gone through a fight with my husband, this was the best way, the most therapeutic way to actually <laughs> let it go. You know, <laughs> Is it? Yeah, really? Uh, so Try it, try it. You <laughs> won't know until you try it. <laughs> I would also <laughs> say I'm I'm a, I'm a bad cook. I I think maybe I can only cook two two dishes. Yeah, I mean I do do my own um, eggs in the morning, but then that's it for cooking uh, for me. To be honest, um, oh, but but yeah. but could can you remember like what when you started cooking? I mean, you said you you could not cook or you were a bad cook. Oh, like, I couldn't how, even make how, tea. I couldn't make tea. I didn't know. <laughs> Now you're better than that, okay? How, how so did you start? Why, Do you remember what was your first dish that you cooked? Um, eggs. 
<laughs> it's not very easy to stop because that's with. easy right <laughs> okay but even then if you go on youtube now there are ways that you can really you know sort of make your eggs better and and mm. how to froth them up and this and that you know so as you become more uh, 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 efficient at doing things and more skilled you will mm. learn new things as you yeah. go along okay but you must enjoy it patrick that's the important of course. thing Of course. Yeah, if you don't enjoy it and you're forcing yourself to do anything, it cannot happen. You know, your your Like your with every job, right? You have to be yeah, passionate that, about it. I think it's about everything. Like now I do a lot of coaching, health coaching as well, and I've told many ladies that the fact that if you start with the mental notion and it's very as a very mental thing, okay? Mm-hmm. If you start with the mental not, uh, notion that oh i should be doing this i should be eating this i should be that i should be is toxic yeah. you're never going to get it done your body knows exactly what is going on mm. and your body will not feel comfortable doing it so you cannot come from that okay it ha- it requires a real mindset change mm. it, it really does and it's only when you feel happy doing it that you find that the the pounds will just come off very easily. Mm. I mean you speak of experience a healthy food is an important thing in in your life. Um you started cooking, you started teaching how to how to cook, you run your own company. Uh but then in 2015 um some bad news arrived. You you were diagnosed with uh, breast uh, cancer. Um, you fought it, you won, uh, which I'm really happy about it. Uh, so I can talk uh, 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 with you about it today. Uh, much respect for that. Um, I know there's a lot of podcasts you were giving also for that, for cancer awareness programs. Uh, I think it's really, uh, we can, I can recommend to watch some of these videos. So I don't want to dig too deep into that because all the information is already there. But still, I want to understand like what what is the process you went through and how did that really change your your mindset or your life after you you knew that you you beat uh this this disease well i think that as far as cancer was concerned right my cancer didn't start because i was eating the wrong food i was already a very healthy person mm, yeah. by the time okay. i had mm-hmm. cancer. okay so let's get that clear but Cancer, you know, can start with many reasons. And more often than not, I tell people this, it's an emotional disease, okay? And if you're not eating well, if you're not eating healthily, then of course it goes faster. But it starts off on an emotional level. And at that time, I was going through a lot in my life, in my marriage and everything. So my cancer was definitely because of all my emotional issues that I was having. But having said that, once I was diagnosed, right, the way that I ate definitely will make a difference. See, once you have cancer, you have to follow certain things because otherwise your cancer, cannot, you cannot get well. So things like, for example, you can't eat sugar when you're diagnosed with cancer is very, very true. Do not touch sugar. Do not eat sugar-laden foods or anything. So for me, the journey actually was much easier, right? I knew exactly what I needed to eat, what I couldn't eat, that I must eat clean, you know. And although today many doctors actually don't emphasize that, but I tell you something that I used to fight with my oncologist and tell him, why aren't you telling your patients this? Why are you telling them they can eat everything? That's rubbish. And he used to tell me, they've just been diagnosed with cancer. We cannot tell them. See, and there's a lot of um, doctors don't want to admit it. And quite honestly, doctors are not nutritionists. They don't know what exactly is the whole nutri- nutrition portfolio. And in fact, I've spoken to many doctors about this, like general practitioners, right? They tell me that they never learned nutrition. When they were in, in doing medicine, which is a joke. <laughs> How mm. can you not know all these things? Sure, I, I understand. I mean, 
Okay, in, in defense to doctors, I mean, nutrition is also, it's a huge topic, right, in the end. Uh, I mean, uh, but, but what you're saying is um, some basic stuff, right, should, should be known. Um, I, I didn't yeah. know about the, about the sugar thing also. Um, if that's really? really, you didn't know? I, I didn't um, know. Well, I never uh, took also the time to, to um, learn or uh, read exactly. about like what is the so, healthy food when, when you got cancer. I mean, yeah. But even if you don't have cancer, this is when you must eat to prevent And this is why it is so important today because a lot of the foods are laden with preservatives, with all sorts of, of uh, things which are not good for your body. So you have to be aware that this goes into all commercial foods. This is why we tell people, learn to cook basic foods also. Eat clean. What is the meaning of the word eat clean? Clean means don't take processed foods because processed foods if you take a lot of it yes it will affect you it will result in mood changes it will result in all the things that we are seeing in the u.s today in the children today has come about because of the fact because of the reliance on processed foods hmm. okay there's too much processed foods and if you eat pizza every single day Believe you me, that you are going to have all these side effects, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is your crazy mood swings, which is um, uh, obesity, uh, diabetes, which means that you have diabetes. You know, all these things have come about because of your food, what mm -hmm. you're eating. So this is why I always emphasize to people that if you actually know what's going into your body, It's a very powerful thing. It's very powerful because you can actually control what you get and don't get. That's how those um, uh, acronyms like food is medicine, medicine is food, right? All came about because you are in power. You have the control, but you must exercise it and you must know about it. You must be educated about it. If you're not even interested in that, Then by the time you, you, you know about it, you've already been diagnosed with three uh, uh, inflammatory diseases and it's a bit late in the day to <laughs> then start you know, saying, okay, it's I want to be healthy now. It's, it's, a good, it's a good reminder, uh, Kita. I, I feel like you're looking at me and telling me directly. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope you... Um, well, I must say, I am very surprised that you wouldn't know about the effects of sugar because... No, no, I, and, and this, I meant... I meant to say I know the effects of sugar. I didn't know like uh, what is the connection like when you are a cancer patient. That that's what I want no, to fair say. Enough. But but would you agree? Like I mean, in the end, it's a question of amount, right? I mean, sugar itself is not um, like a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? You need obviously a little bit of sugar to make it through the day, so your brain brain can also work. Uh, but it's maybe the mass, right, or the amount or the frequency of um, how much sugar you really intake. Okay, now, I don't know whether you know this, but I'm going to educate you a little bit. Yes, well. please, yeah, okay. do so. <laughs> White sugar, refined sugar is a no-no anytime. Okay, I don't even have it in my kitchen now uh -huh. because it is really, really bad for you and it is very addictive. So even if you have a little bit, It, you will feel the need to have more. And as you know, I don't know whether you know this again, okay? I'm saying that because as most people know, if you are having Coke and if you are having 7-Up and all these fizzy drinks, these are the, the actually the, the ones that are really detrimental. Each bottle of Coke has got 15 teaspoons of sugar. That is a lot. It's a lot, so if yeah. You're, if you're a lot of kids are having it every day, they'll have one uh, diet Coke or so they say, you know, but even the diet Coke has got sugar. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand that, you know. And, when, and they won't know what the effect is on them, but it's in the long term. If you've been taking uh, a hamburger and diet Coke every day, my God, you will see the effects. You can't <laughs> escape it. 
<laughs> I, I hope no one eats burgers and drinks coke every day um i, I really hope so um but let's talk about like um healthy food and i i figured out you were also talking about going into the direction uh of uh, vegetarian food or even uh, vegan food i mean there's um and i have seen like uh, hundreds of debates like how healthy uh really that is i mean if if that is even healthier, if you take, let's say, just vegan, right? Um, or if it's also good if you have some meat from time to time. But what is your point of uh, view? I mean, um, is it really harmful to eat meat? Or, or is your point of view, again, it's the amount that you that you intake? Okay, so first thing I want to say, as a coach and as a person who's been in nutrition for a long, long time now, Nobody's body is the same. Everybody's body is different. So a person who starts on, and I've tried all the different uh, lifestyles, okay? I've become a vegan. I've tried everything just to feel what is my body feeling. So everybody is going to feel differently about all these things. So the only way you know is to try it out. But generally speaking, it is much better today to go into a plant-based lifestyle. You must have more fruits and vegetables. That is non-negotiable, all right? You have to, because they do help. They digest so much faster in your body. And pe there are many, many testimonials of people who have become plant-based, who have just stopped eating meat altogether, and they feel so much better. So we have to look at the testimonials. Now, they feel better because the body can digest the food faster, better, and they have more energy. We know that a lot of these foods and vegetables, when they are actually, they are super full. You know, they, they, they've got all these uh, good vitamins and things. They, they are super powered with all these things. So they help the body faster. You'll have more energy for sure. Okay. Now, having tried all these different things, I'll tell you that when I went on a vegetarian vegan diet, I loved it because I had a lot more energy. But after a while, I started to miss the meat and I felt a little bit um, well, okay, you'll have a lot more energy. You won't feel so tired in the afternoons after you've had meat. So you're, you, know, you can work the whole day through. That's what mm -hmm. I found. But at the same time, you know, I felt that after a while, I needed the meat to feel... Uh, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I missed it. And I think that if you miss it, then you must go back to it for a while. You mean if All your right? body tells you that is missing... It yes, your body like will feel it. Right? You yeah. will feel a little bit like, uh, you know, you don't have the energy to do everything mm -hmm. every day. In yeah, the beginning, yeah. you feel really energetic. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed that. But after that, when your body starts to missing. So people say everything in moderation. Yes, I agree with that. But sometimes if you are already suffering from inflammation, if you already have conditions in your body, then you have to take really much more care in what yeah. you're eating, yeah, how much more, you know, and you reduce the amount of meat. And this mm. is why when we talk about eating mindfully, which is a concept which has now become a little bit more um, uh, trending. I mean, you, you yeah. hear about it. It yeah, came yeah. about because we want to make people understand that what you are eating has an effect on your body, has yeah. an effect on how you're going to feel. Mm. So you really need to be conscious of what you're eating, how you're eating, when you're eating, all these things mm. yeah. that become very important. I mean, if, if you cook yourself, and obviously uh, that's what you're teaching, it seems quite fair, mm. like you can learn it and you can, uh, you can also do it at your home. But how difficult do you think is it today to eat healthy outside in restaurants wherever you go how how easy is it to find a restaurant of which you think that serves really healthy food i would say that today i mean it, it there are definitely restaurants uh in malaysia for example let's take mm -hmm. malaysia yeah let's take example. malaysia yeah right um 
we know that there are certain areas where you can find really good healthy food there's a lot of new vegetarian restaurants that have come up uh there are people who are very conscious of what they are putting on the table because you know the the education is such we are becoming more educated so you can find it but not like for example a lifestyle in malaysia and in singapore is what you eat at mamaks right you go to the mamak stall yeah. most of the time <laughs> uh, how do we know the mamaks are healthy i can tell you they're not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be buying the cheapest kind of foods the ones that have all the pesticides and all and they're not going to be using the washers that we use to wash out <laughs> all the pesticides or they don't have the kangen water machines and all that which will wash out all the pesticides so this is the thing you know it's fun it's easy to go and eat outside but it is commercial food no matter what you say right mm. so we are advocating you learn how to cook the same food eat it at home because you are going to buy better quality vegetables you may be using organic instead of using just the normal uh uh cabbage which has the pesticides and everything in it right mm. of course it's still yeah. good but the point is that people when they go out for example you go to a mamak stall are they going to use uh uh antibiotic free chicken i doubt it you're eating the <laughs> you're going to be eating chicken which they can buy the cheapest right mm. Mm. so that's commercial and that already has got all the stuff that chickens you know there's been so much uh, media coverage <laughs> on what they are fed and all these kind of things so I, th you, you i think the all the mamaks in malaysia will not be so happy about uh, your comments <laughs> oh sorry guys you know, this <laughs> but, to, but to i mean downgrade you but you know it is the fact of the matter okay you <laughs> you will you will what you pay for for it is what you will get maybe it's an opportunity to build a healthy mamaks right or maybe they can come to your cooking classes so we can improve yeah, yeah. that a little bit healthy mamak stalls i'm going to target my mamak guys and say okay i'll teach you how to make your food more healthy that that would be nice so i can still feel good when i go to mamak uh, now i just have like a bad feeling when you tell me that but i will still go to be honest uh, i like the food too much i like uh, malaysian food uh, it's awesome um but of course as you said um yeah you cook it yourself you cook it at home you have the full control over what you put in and and what you cook with really you know uh, i read an article once where they were talking about this and how the lady talked about the fact that when you cook your own food it's it's powerful because you have the power about what is going into your body so which means that you are directly responsible i had uh, a lady um, i know i don't have much time but you know i had a lady who actually no uh, was yeah. one of my classes mm. and this is my storytelling i need to tell this story mm -hmm. okay yes, and please. she was very concerned about the fact that her husband was putting on weight and he was a diabetic and she just didn't know how to what she could do to help him Okay and then the the question i asked her is are you cooking the same way who is the cook in the house she said i am i'm the principal cook so i said okay are you cooking the same way and he's eating the same way that his mother used to cook for him and she said yes that's what he wants so and i suddenly realized that that is the key mm. you're the cook so you can control what is going into his body right and how true, you are true. making things and so if you have the knowledge that you can change that so it was like a it was like a light bulb switch for her okay because suddenly she realized hey maybe that's the problem i'm just cooking the way that he's used to why can't i change that so we need to be able to educate people that this can be done if mm -hmm. you are the principal cook then you start cooking in a way which is clean mm -hmm. you start yeah. using vegetables which are clean true true
I, I like the story. And when you just tell me, like, uh, you have to educate people, um, where to where to start best, right? I mean, at the kid's age, we learn fastest, we learn best. Uh, you just mentioned to me before that you're starting like basically a kid's class, um, which which I think is a perfect way really to make kids aware also about how healthy food is or what food is not healthy. Can you just let me know a little bit more about the program or what is your idea behind it? Okay, so... Um First of all, I, I never knew what Zoom was in the first place. You know, I, I only came across Zoom in the last <laughs> one year <laughs> when it became popular. And the, my first challenge, because I have always been running cooking classes, clean cooking classes, mostly for adults. Okay. And uh, sometimes for children, especially children who are going abroad or if they are going to study and they're going to be independent, their mothers want me to try and help them to you know, create a lifestyle. So today it, it, it is, it's, it's even more important because um, on the Zoom level, we can actually now create classes where people are following us from their kitchens. Okay, so they will cook at the same time that we cook, but they just need more instruction. So uh, I realized that... Um, I can do everything on WhatsApp, meaning I give them instructions and everything so that they can pre-prepare. So what an idea came to me because it's the end of the year. A lot of children are at home. They're having holidays and their parents are going out of their head, wondering what to do with the children since there's also restrictions on going out. They can't go out too much, right? Because of COVID and mm -hmm. everything. They're not yeah. allowed to go to malls and just hang out and lay park in any mall or anything. So I thought this would be a brilliant idea, you know, to get the end for the younger children who are less than, you know, maybe they are not schooled about how to be in the kitchen alone and all that. Then their parents can cook with them. And it's a great bonding exercise as well. Yeah, nice. For yeah, two yeah. People to, yeah, and, and I know that kids and parents just, uh, kids especially, love to cook. It's just that we don't want them in the kitchen alone where if they have to do things on the <laughs> yeah, stove yeah, and all true, that, true. they need to be supervised, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of people are looking for activities at this time of the year. So I thought, why not take it one step further? We do the Zoom class with kids and parents, you know, and this way at least, you know, we can actually get the kids to cook At the same time, we are teaching them clean eating principles because I am teaching things like vegan mac and cheese. And believe me, this vegan mac and cheese is the best you'll ever try <laughs> because there's no cheese at all. Many, many children are, are dairy, they're lactose intolerant, right? Uh -huh, yeah. But at the same time, it really tastes like mac and cheese. You know, this is what I always tell people. Ultimately, it is not difficult to go plant-based or to become vegan if you really know how to substitute. Hmm. Find alternatives which will give you the same taste, the same uh, thing. A vegan mac and cheese is a comfort food. You want that comfort. And we have found ways now to be able to create that cheesy taste. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you to tell all your people who are listening to this that please come for the class and you'll see for yourself how we are able to really simplify cooking and yet create stuff which is good for you, good for your body, but also you will love the food. Sure, sure. I will share the link. You let me know later uh, where people can sign up or get more information, uh, connect with you also on LinkedIn or other social media uh, so they can join the classes, learn that. I think it sounds quite quite cool, quite exciting also and should be a, a quite good uh, program. Um 
one last thing. I mean, we're already running short of time, uh, uh, but it was awesome. I learned so much already today about food only. Um, I want to quickly talk or give you the chance to talk about Vibrant Living with Gita. There's a new company that you founded recently also. Um, you mentioned it's about uh, empowering people uh, to regain or better their physical health with a renewed sense of self-love, self-worth, self-confidence, uh, no matter what their age. Uh, give me in, if you can, in two three minutes a uh, better idea what what you what what is the idea behind it and what you're going to do with that okay so vibrant living with gita is actually my own company vibrant living is the what what can i describe it in one or two words is living life in technicolor if we want to talk if we, we're not living it in black and white Okay, but we are living it in Technicolor. That means that uh, if we are having an ice cream, it would be um, a banana split with everything on it. All right. So I just want to be able to promote joy, promote enthusiasm in everything that we do. We are vibrant. Okay. Now, so three arms that I am looking at in this Vibrant Living with Gita. We have Vibrant Living Foods. We have vibrant living practices and we have vibrant travel. Now, I have let go of the vibrant travel for the time being because, you know, we are not traveling. Yeah. In the that <laughs> But vibrant living foods is about basically teaching people how to eat the right foods, the right nutrition. And uh, this could be on Zoom. Th this could be with classes. But basically... You know, I'm doing a lot of videos as well to promote veganism, to promote clean eating and uh, to promote mindful eating. All right. These are all the things. And then for vibrant living practices, it's all the other practices that I'm doing. Um, I believe that each one of us has to have our own routine of practices that we do. Now, things like gratefulness practice, um, things like... Um, Uh, being mindful of many things, energy alignment, meditation, all these are the practices which I feel will help you to lead a vibrant life and to really get into that space. Okay, so the modalities are so many, everybody is doing different things. So Whatever things I feel are working for me, I want to be able to talk about these in many of the videos and um, in, in the public space as well. I'm always happy to go up and speak. So, Patrick, if you know of somebody who wants to listen to this kind of thing. And one more thing. Before the, I, uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to be <laughs> called upon to speak anywhere. I am very happy to do that. Secondly, I am also trying now as far as LinkedIn is concerned, to get into the B2B space of uh, doing lunch and learns for corporations based on all these topics, you know, things like meditation. Uh, and we do it um, in, in small uh, nuggets, okay? We are able to talk to their employees as part of employee wellness. And I want to be able to promote this to corporations, to companies, because today mental health is a very big issue. Right, And we want to be able to help them from the beginning to not get to the stage where they have become so depressed and things like that. Right, yeah. So this is where it starts. So we want to be able to have programs where coaches like ourselves, we are equipped. All right? I am also a life coach, so I am able to talk about things like depression and mental wealth. And when we give it to them in bite-sized sprints, it works. Awesome. For a healthy workplace, I understand. Uh, great idea. Uh, thank you so much, Gita, for uh, sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience, your stories uh, with us today. I really appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate the time you took. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry, Patrick, for going over time. Okay, you know, it's hard. <laughs> no worries. <to> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs>
I'm not, I'm not like really strict on the half hour, so no problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gita. Um, and thanks uh, to the audience for watching. Uh, we will have the links how to reach out to Gita, of course, in the in the video and the description also. How to sign up for her cooking classes, um, especially the one with the kids. If your families um, don't miss that out, I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, stay healthy, eat healthy food. Uh, reach out to Gita to figure out which is the best healthy food and. Uh, uh, then I see you next week for a new episode of Pat's Chat. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. See you.